we have all heard about or encountered probabilities. There is a 60% chance that India will win the third cricket match against England. There is one in a 10 chance that it will rain tomorrow. There is a 90% chance of recovering from COVID after taking the vaccine. Note that all these statements talk about positive numbers, more precisely fractions ranging between 0 and 1. Can probability be negative? Can we have a statement like there is a minus 90% chance of recovery after taking the vaccine? No, that clearly sounds wrong. Let's give some mathematical intuition. Let's say I have a switch. It can be on or off. We denote on by 0 and off by 1. That's two possible outcomes. You see this in the other statements too. For example, it may rain or not rain. That's two outcomes. I may recover from COVID or not recover from COVID. That's again two outcomes. In probability theory, the probability of each outcome corresponds to a positive real number. Let's say P1 the probability of outcome 1, P2 is the probability of outcome 2. To make it mathematically look nicer, we can collect this in a 2 by 1 vector P1, P2. The constraint is that P1 plus P2 equals 1. Each probability very roughly measures how likely the outcome is. If P1 is higher, the outcome is more likely to be 0, that is the switch is more likely to be on. If P2 is higher, it is more likely to be 1, that is the switch is more likely to be off. They can also be equal, equal to 0 0.5 that is. But they are certainly not negative. It would say nothing about how likely the outcome is. Let's say the doctor told you, you have a minus 90% chance of recovering from COVID. Does that mean you are more likely to recover or less likely to recover? Would you be happy or sad? Now imagine, what if we had a different theory though, something very close to probability theory, but that could handle negative numbers as well. Let's say P1 and P2 can be any real number now, even negative ones. Now, P1 and P2 are not probabilities, but we want P1 squared and P2 squared to be probabilities. So, let's say we change the constraint to be P1 squared plus P2 squared equal to 1. We wouldn't want to call P1 and P2 probabilities, as there is still no physical meaning to a negative probability. But we have to name them something, so let's call them probability amplitudes. Sounds fine, right? You can ask. Why don't we directly talk about P1 square and P2 square? What's the need for talking about amplitudes? Let's try to answer this question mathematically. Let's look at a problem first. Suppose there is a city and a village. Say from a statistical report you get to know that the percentage of city dwellers, people that migrate from one part of the city to another, that is city to city movement, is 95% whereas 5% people migrate from the city to the village. And among the village dwellers, 97% migrate from one part of the village to another, that is village to village movement, and 3% from village to city. We can arrange these probability vectors side by side in a matrix. This is called a stochastic matrix. Suppose you know that for the present year, the population in the city is 600,000, and the population in the village is 400,000, that is 60% in the city and 40% in the village. We can also write them in the form of a probability matrix. To find out what will be the probable population distribution next year, that is, how much percentage of people will likely be in the city and in the villages, we multiply the probability vector with the stochastic matrix to get the output, which as you can see is another probability vector. In mathematical language, consider a probability vector P1, P2. You are interested in what happens if you multiply this vector by a 2 cross 2 matrix. After doing this, you get another vector Q1, Q2. You could ask, what is the set of all 2 cross 2 matrices that map this probability vector to a different probability vector? That means, P1 plus P2 should be 1 and Q1 plus Q2 also has to be 1. There is a name to this class of matrices. They are called stochastic matrices as we just said. 
we can prove that each column of this matrix is by itself a probability vector. You can verify just by elementary matrix multiplication that stochastic matrices take as input probability vectors and give as output probability vectors as we saw in the example. Everything normal till now. So where are the negative probabilities? Let's introduce them. Consider the vector P1, P2 again. But this time P1 and P2 can take negative numbers and P1 square plus P2 square has to be 1. Let's say the matrix takes it to another vector Q1, Q2. We no longer want Q1 plus Q2 to be 1, instead we want Q1 square plus Q2 square to be 1. What is the set of matrices that does this? Now the stochastic matrices won't do as a different constraint of q1 square plus q2 square equal to 1 has been added. So only few special matrices can perform this operation. They are called unitary matrices. For simplicity, in this definition, we restrict our discussion to unitary matrices with real valued entries only. Basically, they are orthogonal matrices, those matrices whose product with their transpose gives the identity matrix and their entries can now have negative numbers as well. So as you see, changing the constraint we care about changes the entire family of matrices that we can apply. Let's see how that works. Let us get to the usefulness part of it. But before that, few more mathematical notations. Let us define the two states on and off as vectors 1, 0 and 0, 1. The vector 1, 0 represents that the switch is definitely on and likewise the vector 0, 1 represents the switch is definitely off. We write these two vectors as Dirac Ket notations. Nothing to fear, these are just names written in angular brackets. We assign the name Ket0 to the vector 1, 0 and Ket1 to the vector 0, 1. Any two-dimensional vector or any two cross two matrix can be decomposed into these ket notations. What happens when we apply a special unitary matrix to ket0? That is, we multiply the vector with a unitary matrix. Note, unlike the previous case, here the sum of squares of each column is 1. We can do direct vector multiplication and see that the resultant vector is 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2, which can be decomposed as 1 by root 2 times ket0 plus 1 by root 2 times ket1, the 1 by root 2s being the probability amplitudes. It means the switch will have a probability amplitude of 1 by root 2 for being on and a probability amplitude of 1 by root 2 for being off. What happens if we multiply this resultant vector that we got again with the unitary matrix, we get the vector 0, 1, which is ket1. Writing elaborately, as there are negative numbers allowed now in the matrix, some negative terms appear and get cancelled out. Quite evidently, once we sum up these terms, half ket1 and half ket1 add up to ket1 and half ket0 and minus half ket0 cancel each other. What we just saw was that if we have the state 1 by root 2 ket0 plus 1 by root 2 ket1 and then we apply our unitary matrix, we get the state ket1. This is interesting for various reasons. Applying a matrix like this one is in essence a randomized process as depending on what our starting vector is, this matrix will take us to a different final resultant vector every time. Interestingly enough, when our starting state is 1 by root 2 ket0 plus 1 by root 2 ket1, the vector it takes us to is ket1. Note that the starting state has equal probability amplitude and hence equal probability on both ket0 and ket1. Can we do this with stochastic matrices? like in normal probability theory? Let's say we start with the following vector half ket0 plus half ket1. This again has equal probability on both ket0 and ket1. Is there a stochastic matrix that takes this vector to ket1? You can prove very easily that the only matrix that achieves this is the matrix 0101. 
the thing is this matrix represents a deterministic process we can prove that no matter what input vector you start with the above matrix will always take it to k1 thus there is no randomized stochastic matrix that takes half k0 plus half k1 to k1 why you could say that this is because of cancellations in a stochastic matrix we have input vectors with only positive numbers every entry is positive there is no scope of cancellations by the intermingling of positive and negative terms cancellations only occur when we allow negative numbers the name for this probability like theory that deal with negative numbers is quantum mechanics the matrices we just saw are called quantum gates the vectors we saw are called quantum states in quantum computers we can have cancellations like we just saw so if we want a particular state as output we can design a matrix that changes the probability amplitude of that state since classically we do not have negative numbers we cannot have cancellations quantum computers use the power of these negative numbers to perform certain tasks much faster than classical computers interesting want to know more stay tuned to our channel